Man United want to sign Sofyan Amrabat to fix their midfield problems. But what are their midfield problems? And how does Sofyan Amrabat fix them? Well, let's find out what sort of player he is. And I can tell you for certain he is a ball-winning midfield destroyer. That's what he does. Which is odd, because when you look at his statistics on FBRF, it does not tell you that story. What it tells you is that he's very good at passing, progressive passing, passes in the final third, and carrying the ball. Which is not really what you'd associate with a defensive midfielder. And he's also in the lower percentiles for anything to do with goal creation or shot creation he's not really the attacking player like that progressive player maybe yes but what we do see we look at his time at Morocco is that he runs more than anyone else on the planet especially in the World Cup and also he makes more recoveries than any player at the World Cup that's what he did in the last tournament in 2022 and he did this for Morocco in a very defensive 4-1-4-1 we all know how they played in the World Cup very defensive this is it very squished in they want to hit on the counter-attack and break against teams who push up against them and Amrabat was the defensive captain leader ball winning destroyer supreme that's what he was called look at him and kind of nibble up all the tackles and what he would do is when the ball was shown wide because naturally they're in a block so the ball always goes wide they go over to this side say he would join up with the two wide players and win the ball back around here and if the ball went to the other side of the pitch guess who would join in to help Amrabat over here so he was winning the ball constantly if you look at all the data you see from the World Cup rather than just showing you what he does is win the ball constantly around here but also here and also here he goes everywhere he's got a great engine and stamina and aggression to win the ball back so where does he fit into Ten Hag's midfield well first we should find out what Ten Hag actually wants and we know what he wants because he he told us and this is what he sounds like he says what do we want to be <laughs> what do we want to be we want to be the best transition team in the world who want a surprise we want to play dynamic we want to play with speed we want to play aggressive out of a very good team spirit because that is united he's told us what he wants and all his signings so far have been deliberate and they suit this model this is what he wants to do for instance mason mount he's not been signed because he's amazing at creating chances in around the box he can do it but he's not great at it he's better out of possession so his work rate his tactical discipline his positioning all these things are important especially as part of a high press which is where he comes into that sort of team and then there's hoyland you put him in here a centre forward when he's fit he'll play now hoyland can either receive the ball and hold it up which is very useful you're playing out from the back and then other players can play off him, or he can run in behind and get past the last man. He's good at dribbling. So you've got a player good in transition who also helps when you're being pressed by another team. So good in defensive transition and attacking transition. And then of course you've got Onana, who gives you the option of playing over or through a press. So you can go over a press, the great kicking out wide, or he can play through defensive lines trying to tackle him quickly, or he just makes sure you don't lose the ball, you keep possession, so you can build the way you want and therefore be useful in transition. And the way it works in build up at the moment tends to be that Wan Bissaka goes a bit flat and they have this sort of three with Shaw either inverting or moving up the pitch and if Shaw does move up the pitch then what you get is Mount or Ericsson drops in to give you two options in the midfield to play so you might call it double pivot or whatever you want to call it two midfielders in here one alongside Casemiro that's what you get a deep line playmaker alongside the more anchor player which is Casemiro and then of course it transitions as they move into their attacking shape so what you get is the centre backs get more central Casemiro becomes the anchor and then the left sided midfielder joins the attack so you should get Rashford in these spaces Anthony in these spaces Hoyland or whoever He's uh, not in yet. Marshall goes here. Then you should be able to get this sort of thing in here. And Shaw can give you some width and some delivery from out wide. But you'll also get at times Fernandez hooks over to this side here because he's great at putting balls into the box. And that'll be very useful when they have a striker who can make use of it, which they don't at the moment. So where does Amrabat fit into this kind of system then? Well, the most obvious place, as we've seen, is probably by putting him in to where Casemiro is. He can be the backup to Casemiro. And what you'd get in his place in this sort of position is lots more energy, lots more dynamism, tenacity, trying to win the ball back higher up the pitch it's one of the things that United have been caught out with a couple of times actually is Casemiro in this position because he's maybe not as connected to the two midfielders Mount and Fernandez as maybe you'd want him to be and so that it creates a little bit of a gap and maybe the centre backs aren't pushed up as much as you want and it creates a little bit too much depth between the centre back and the forwards and it creates this sort of space which then Casemiro has to fill in and if he's not quick enough to snap in and win the tackles a team could play through them and then you get teams counter-attacking them through this sort of shape and it looks like against Wolves especially players are able to get the ball and run through the middle of them because there was a huge gap that was an issue they had so you get more energy more tenacity he wins the ball back a lot that's what he's great at but we also know he's great with the ball as well that's one of the things he's been best at for Fiorentina and when United are dropping back we often see him do for Fiorentina is drop to be the deepest player so he'll go like this center backs can split like this which means you can then push your full backs a little bit further on so you get this kind of shape obviously this is a bit nuts you won't really see this but he can get in the ball here carry it that's what he does and then he can start picking these beautiful long passes out wide which he can also also do really well he's got great progressive passes as we saw in his epi ref stats earlier so we know Amrabat could do this role the anchor role and drop deep and do all the things he's 
good at from that, like he's done for Fiorentina. But then you lose Casemiro, and Casemiro is great. Like you see, he has been getting uh, run past a few times this season already. It's a lot to do with tactics and the depth between him and the midfielders, but it's also because he's just not been playing that well yet. But he's still a very good player. I like Casemiro, and so what you want to do is maybe not lose Casemiro from your team. And in fact, what you can then do instead is something else. Because say, for instance, someone like Mason Mount was injured, and now he is, of course, out he goes, then you can bring in Casemiro as your anchor and play Amrabat next to him. And Amrabat can also play as part of this two midfielder system here. So what you then get is the anchor holding everything together with the centre backs directing, leading things like he's done in the past Real Madrid with Amrabat next to him as more of his bodyguard trying to win the ball back in these areas which he's very good at. And so in theory, doing this, you're much harder to play against through the middle. So you're more solid and compact and defensive in the middle of the pitch, harder to play against. That's what you want to be. You want to be hard to break down. And then of course, you've got Fernandez here. What might happen eventually is Anthony comes out. You put Fernandez over to the right wing, does it quite a lot under Ten Hag. Then your Martial's going to be out. You've got Hoyland up here who can do this. And that means you can bring Mason Mount back when he's not injured. And so now you've got a, a team who can press really well with Mount, Amrabat, Casemiro, Hoyland holding it all together deeper. Then you've got Fernandez hooking the ball into Hoyland from those angles he's good at. Then of course you've got Rashford playing in the spaces that he's really good at and maybe Shaw or whoever's playing at left back on the overlap. That kind of all makes sense and that's where Amrabat comes in and gives you lots of options and tactical depth. So we've solved it. This guy fixes them. He's a destroyer. He's good in open play on the ball. He gives you lots of running, energy, dynamism, which they've lacked in midfield so far this season. But how come Amrabat's profile doesn't look like the player I'm describing? This does not look like a ball winning midfield machine destroyer thing. That doesn't look like it. It looks like someone who progresses the ball, as we discussed. And it's all to do with the team he plays for. So for Morocco, very defensive, 38% average possession in the World Cup. That's what you get. A team who sits back and lots of opportunity to make tackles and make recoveries and do all the things he's good at. Whereas Fiorentina have about an average of 56% in Serie A last season, so lots more of the ball. So fewer opportunities to do things out of possession, to win the tackles, make the recoveries that he's very good at for Morocco. But the thing is, despite Amrabat playing for Fiorentina who dominate possession, only Napoli had more of the ball than they did last season in Serie A, he still managed to make the second most fouls in the league, which is obviously very useful when you're trying to stop counter-attacks at source. So he can commit some of the dark arts. Maybe that'll help you stop being played to the middle like Wolves did, again, making you harder to play against. And here's the biggest thing of all, yes, he sort of is a ball winning midfielder, but really Amrabat's been playing as a deep line playmaker for some time. He's been a very good deep line playmaker for some time. Look and see them here. Here's some screenshots of him playing. Here he is between the centre backs, bringing the ball out from the back. He likes doing that, pinging these long balls out to wide people. They take the ball down, the team moves up the pitch. It's a very long progressive pass. He's very accurate with his long passing. Very useful when you've got someone like Marcus Rashford running on that wing. Then you come here, you see his benefit of being out of possession, how he wins the ball back. Fiorentina swoop onto Juventus very early. Here's the Juventus player on the ball. Here he is, he drives in, spots the opportunity to win the ball back, snaps it, and then it turns into a shot for Fiorentina as they then go on the counter-attack. Very useful for the counter-pressing that Eric Ten Hag wants his team to do. And then you've got the example of him pushing up, not really playing as a deep ball-winning anchor or anything like that. Instead, here he is in this position inside the box, the ball comes back to him, and he hooks a beautiful pass in for someone to head into the goal. So you're getting everything from Amrabat. You're getting energy, dynamism, lots of tenacious tackling and winning the ball back, but also he is actually very good on the ball. He might not be the first choice in midfield for Ten Hag, but maybe Ten Hag doesn't have a first choice in midfield. He wants to have options and Amrabat will give him options. And that's why Man United want him. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.